This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, he is an elderly 80-year-old man who has this hypermature cataract with the capsular flex on the anticapsule and he is scheduled for phaco emulsification and let's understand and try to see what are the challenges we are going to expect in this patient and how are we going to deal with it the side ports are made the capsule is stained and ovd is put into the anti chamber 2.8 mm incision on the steep axis is planned and is being performed now as i puncture the anti capsule the liquid cortex is escaping out gentle irrigation ensures that the liquid cortex is washed out so that visualization will be better ovd is refilled into the anterior chamber and the flap is held with the forceps and the rexus is begun care is taken to avoid these calcified specks forceps gives better control in such eyes where we are expecting loose zonules as the rexus is completed i realize that the size of rexus could be smaller to deal with these dense bulky nucleus so plan is to do a secondary larger rexus before that i am just irrigating out the loose cortex so that i'll have good visualization the ovd is refilled into the anterior chamber using a micro scissors a tangential cut is given to the anterior capsule and holding that flap is torn to give us a bigger and wider secondary rexus the enlargement is done from the other side as well since this is going to be a free floating nucleus since this is hard nucleus getting the chop right and dividing it is going to be a little bit challenging the visualization is not great the patient has a deep set eyes there's some amount of conjunctival ballooning all of this is uh, causing the fluid to pool in so my assistant is using the suction pump to aspirate out all the pool fluid the plan is to create a small initial trench followed by a horizontal chop the initial trench of about 50 to 60% is created then the nucleus is held firmly with the phaco tip and the tip is buried into the core of the nucleus the nucleus is slightly lifted up so that i am quite away from the posterior capsule the chopper goes in and hooks the into nucleus and then scores the nucleus i suddenly have this jerky feeling when posterior plate just gives away suddenly the moving on to the next chop the tip is buried and as the horizontal chop maneuver is performed i can notice that there is some amount of torque and this is commonly seen again when we're dealing with slightly denser nucleus again it could have been minimized if my phaco tip had buried much more deeper into the substance of the nucleus i believe it was not deep enough and that is the reason why i had some degree of torque so the next piece i'm consciously burying the tip slightly deep inside and let us see how this chop works again the chopper is engaging the endonucleus and the scoring is done and we can see that the there is no torque but suddenly the patient coughs now and we can see this jerky movement it's purely because the patient was coughing i go back and inject viscoelastic and wait for the patient to settle down a little bit The small central part of the endonucleus is freely floating here which is emulsified with ease but some of the other pieces the posterior plates might be still held together so i need to be conscious about this fact After emulsifying this fragment again time to replenish the eye with more ovd I'm finding it a little bit tricky to separate the last few attachments which are holding these two fragments of this hemineucleus. Back 
and since the hemineuclis is popped out of the bag i'm just trying to push them back into the bag again so that the emulsification process is done away from the cornea the first of these two last fragments is emulsified Finally, the last fragment again is emulsified again very slowly and in a very controlled manner because it's slightly come up and it's above the iris plane. I need to be mindful that excessive turbulence is uh, not going to cause any damage to the endothelium. The cortex is aspirated and the intraocular lens is placed into the bag. To summarize the case, well this case was uh, quite tough because we had free floating nucleus uh, but it was very hard, it was not easy to divide it or fragment it again. So the, my choice of dividing this nucleus, that is the horizontal chopping technique which I used was the right decision I thought because if I would used a vertical chop it would have taken a still more effort and probably a little bit more stress on the bag and the zonules to divide them and compare to the horizontal chopping technique. But however, I could notice that couple of instances where there was torque in the nucleus when you're trying to do the chopping manure. Probably this could have been minimized if I was conscious about the position of my tip. It needed to be much more deeper, engaging a deeper core of the nucleus. If I had done that, then probably the amount of torque which I had would have been minimized. These are some of the learnings which I could gather from this case. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.